activity will show you the process of replacing a failing knee joint. Are you ready? Today, our patient is a 76-year-old man. It is mandatory to check the patient's vital signs before beginning surgery. An anesthesiologist in the operating room performs this step. If the patient's vital signs are not in the normal ranges, we will not proceed with the surgery. Using the healthy person's vital sign chart as a reference, can our patient undergo surgery today? Yes. It looks like surgery will proceed as planned. Take a moment to look at our patient's x-rays. Which knee do you think needs surgery? Left one. You're right. His left knee appears worn down and lacking cartilage, which is likely the cause of his pain. The nurse has begun prepping our patient for surgery by placing an IV needle in his right hand. Now it's your turn. Use the marker and write your initials on the proper knee to be operated on. This may seem silly, but it's an actual step taken to prevent wrong site surgeries. The anesthesiologist administers drugs through the IV and through a mask over the patient's face. What function should these drugs perform? Good work. Nope. Great. No. Fantastic. After the patient is unconscious, and before the first incision is made, we need to establish a sterile field around the surgical area. A series of sterile drapes isolates the surgical field from the rest of the patient's body. A tourniquet is applied to cut off blood flow, which allows a clearer view of the surgical field during surgery. To kill the bacteria on the patient's leg, clean it in a betadine solution. This scrubbing process will limit the chance of bacterial infection. Betadine scrub is applied two more times, followed by the final arrangement of sterile drapes. Why do you think knee surgery involves so many drapes? Good work. Use the sterile marker to draw the location for our incision, and don't forget to mark the perpendicular lines too. Typically, the incision line is six to seven inches long. purpose do you think the perpendicular lines serve? Outstanding. Now for the incision. Take the scalpel and cut the skin following your markings. Let's use the Bovi pencil to cauterize the veins. This will help decrease blood flow into the surgical field. The rake retractors fold the skin and tissue out of the way, exposing our patient's knee. To operate, we need the patient's knee elevated and bent so the bones are fully exposed. Now the leg is at the proper angle. Use the rongeur to remove the anterior cruciate ligament, or ACL, the meniscus, and any bone spurs that may be lurking about. Are you a good sculptor? It's time to shape the femur, tibia, and patella so the new knee components fit properly. A hole must be drilled inside the femur to set up the distal femoral cutting jig and alignment device. The jig is put into position and helps ensure that the cuts made to the bone are exactly what are needed. Now hammer in the pins to hold the jig. We can now remove the alignment device. The pins will hold the jig firmly in place. Now for some real bone shaping. Use the bone saw to cut the bone so it is prepared for the new femoral component. Another cutting jig along with the bone saw allows us to finish shaping the femur. move on and shape the tibia. The tibial cutting jig is aligned with the big toe and the highest point of the tibia. This will ensure the leg is properly aligned after surgery. Secure the jig in place with more pins.
use the bone saw to cut off the top of the tibia and prepare it for the new tibial components. Now we'll use the patellar cutting jig and bone saw to remove the back of our patient's patella. Holes in the tibia and patella are drilled and chiseled out, which will enable the new components to attach properly. Time to place the trial components. First, attach the femoral trial component. Attach the metal tray trial component to the tibia. Insert the plastic trial spacer into the metal tray component. Lastly, attach the patellar trial component. Why do you think the two tibial components are inserted separately instead of as one unit? Conduct a range of motion tests to assure a proper knee alignment and successful prosthetic fit. Typically, a normal range of motion allows the leg to move from 0 to 130 degrees. How does our knees aren't meant to bend sideways? So it's important to determine whether there is a gap or space between the femoral and tibial components. There is no noticeable gap, so this knee is a good fit. Why do you think there are so many steps taken to ensure proper alignment? Great! We've tested the trial components. Now let's remove them and prepare for the permanent components by applying a special cement compound that binds metal and plastic to bone. A scrub technician has mixed up a batch of cement for you to use. With the cement in place, the final components are permanently attached to the knee. Any excess cement will be scraped off and thrown away. Lay the leg flat on the table so the new knee components put pressure on each other. This allows the bone and components to bond with the cement. The cement can take anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes to harden. We perform our range of motion tests one final time. Our patient's new knee is looking good. Let's close up the incision. First, suture the deep tissue and fat layers back together. For closing the surface incision, you have a choice between the stapler and the suture. What is the primary difference between these two methods of closing the incision? Excellent. You know, we couldn't ask for a better participant. You've done an excellent job. Are you sure this is your first total knee replacement? Our patient will remain in the hospital for three days, followed by three to eight weeks of physical therapy. Because of this surgery, our patient will have significantly reduced pain and increased mobility. Before you leave, let's think about the life of the new knee components. What kind of forces do you think the new knee will need to withstand? Nice job. People average about 5,000 steps per day. Our patient's new prosthetics will withstand a great deal of force for 36 million steps or more. I'm off to check on another patient while the OR team prepares the room for the next surgery. You've been a great help. See you next time. No problem. Thank you for your time. And I hope you guys enjoyed this as I have.